Hi, welcome to this video series on SMT solvers. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how to use SMT solvers for reverse engineering of basic binaries. Uh, what I mean by basic binaries is binaries that do not have branches. Okay, very uh, straightforward, uh, you know, more or less like straight line code. Okay, so uh, my goal is to, to, to demonstrate to you first uh, how we can use Python for reverse engineering and then apply SMT solver on the reverse engineered model to, to answer some questions. Okay, so let me get straight into a, an, an example from uh, the computer systems book um, the, uh, authored by uh, professors from Carnegie Mellon. Uh, it's a pretty nice book and uh, it, it teaches a lot of interesting details about machine code and uh, computer architecture at a high level. Very nice book. Okay, anyway, um, here is the problem, right? On your left hand side, you see a bunch of uh, C statements, and uh, right is the assembly code. And um, uh, we make an assumption here that uh, this is on a 64 bit machine. That's why you're seeing RDA, RSI, and so on. Um, we assume that the variable X goes to the RDA register, Y goes to RSI register, and the Z goes to RDX register, right? The, the the question now is simple what is the pro, what is the program really doing you know if it does some addition multiplication and again addition multiplication uh, can we get at a high level um, what is this return value is okay so i'm going to show you how i actually implemented a python version of uh, reverse engineering uh, i will show you first that and then i will use smt solver to answer some questions okay so let's get straight into the Python implementation. So here is our uh, assembly code translated into uh, yeah, a bunch of variables, um, RI, RDI, RSI, and RDX are the three input variables, right? Which has the value X, Y, Z respectively. And uh, uh, all of the statements that you saw on the slides, like what is the first thing we said? We said RAX is uh, nothing but uh, Lee statement. I assume you, you're familiar with some of these low level assembly statements. Basically it means take the value of RSI and add it to, to, to RDI and put it back to RAX and, and, and add means add the value of RAX and RDX and put it to RAX and so on. And this is arithmetic left shift and this is multiplication. So these are all the assembly uh, fragments and I model it here in, in Python. Okay. All of these uh, statements are basically straightforward translation from the assembly code. And now I'm asking a question, what is the value in RAX, right? Okay, so what, or what is the expression in RAX? Okay, so the program actually doesn't do much other than this. Okay, it takes your x, y, z and does some multiplication, left shift, and addition by four. Can we now uh, use, um, say, uh, Python? Oh, first of all, I will explain how you got uh, how I got this expression printed. Okay, so here is the expression class. Okay, um, expression class models the um, the behavior of uh, uh, an integer at a high level, what other things can you do with an integer? You can do XR of two integers, you can multiply integers, divide, divide integers, all the operations you can do, uh, it's basically overdone here. I, I took this expression class from an um, SMT uh, book, um, SMT by example book actually, and it has lots of fascinating examples, and I just took this, this expression class only from that book, okay. And uh, then I modeled these expressions, um, well, you we have only three expressions, right? X, Y, Z to start with, because those are the three um, inputs that we are passing into this program, okay? So once you model that, you can just uh, go ahead and call print RAX, it's printing the expression. So far, no SMT solver, nothing, right? We have just used regular Python, uh, used a class and overwrote uh, the standard operations like plus, minus, multiplication, and so on. No, um, uh, uh, SMT solver so far. Okay, now let's introduce SMT solver and uh, do some more analysis. So for that, I copied, um, I, I wrote some some code. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll make my X, Y, Z inputs a symbolic, and I'm going to, to, to answer some questions, okay? I actually will first show you uh, what's there in the symbolic, uh, in the SMT code, okay? So here's the SMT code. I created my X, Y, Z as uh, three symbolic variables, bit vectors, which can take any values. Uh, 32 bit vectors because those were integer variables. Okay. And I created the SMT solver. And remember now, the REAX itself is an expression coming from Python. So we need to evaluate the Python expression first. Um, so we get a basically um, a Boolean statement at this point, right? What you're saying is can the expression be ever zero or, or three in this case? Let's say, um, can this expression be ever minus one? If yes, um, let, let's check that first. 
Okay, I'm not even doing if s. We can do this if statement. If check is equal to stat, right? Equal to stat, then print the model, right? So let's see whether we ever get minus one. Oh, we can get minus one if our input is this enormously large number, zero and three, then we get minus one. So we can answer questions like this very easily. Um, find out, uh, of course, we need to, to, to model first the, these things. And there are tools that can do the translation for you. Take your assembly code and translate into uh, symbolic models. So what we did is pretty much manually translated assembly code into to, uh, symbolic expressions, right? Um, basically, uh, we created an expression. Uh, this, this portion is Python, regular Python, no symbolic. I just want to be clear here. The symbolic part comes here. Uh, all we did is once we build the expression RAX expression, right? RAX is usually the register that contains the return result. Uh, we are asking, can this function ever return minus one? Okay, so we can go back to this question. Okay, here is the function earth function. Can this function ever return minus one? If yes, find find the input values x, y, z that will return minus one. So we can um, answer such kind of questions easily now through the help of uh, um, z3. Okay, first we did Python. Uh, all, let me summarize the, the steps. I translated the assembly code into a bunch of uh, Python statements because you know assembly statements are basically move, copy, uh, uh, transfer, whatnot. And then I got an expression involving my inputs x, y, z, right? Uh, that's the expression I got. And then that expression is basically passed into an SMT solver. And then we are asking the solver, can that expression evaluate to the value minus one? If yes, show me the values. Okay, it was able to show the values x, y, z. Okay. I don't think it is easy to answer such questions without a, a solver. Okay. Um, it, it may be possible, of course, but it will take some time. Um, the expression class itself is reusable uh, for all integers. Okay, there's nothing specific to that particular assembly code. So you write it only once. You overwrite, add, subtract, add, uh, left shift, right shift, and so on. And then you take your assembly code and model it like this, right? Um, of course, there are no branches here. Otherwise, uh, you have to introduce the notion of branch and semantics of branch and so on. It, it will become more complicated at this point. Um, but uh, if you have branches, I have shown other, in other videos how you can convert it into, to, into SMT solvers directly. Okay, and, and that's all. You, you get the values of X and Y and Z um, through symbolic evaluation. Thank you very much.